Hi teachers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Tobin. I am the blogger and content creator behind Elementary Nest. Today is day two of our end of the year video series. Yesterday we talked about compiling everything we have to do at the end of the year and putting it into more time manageable chunks and tackling them starting today or tomorrow. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about tackling end of the year behavior. So we're gonna be talking about what kind of behaviors you're going to see and then strategies to work around those behaviors at the end of the year. So like I said yesterday, we have a little freebie with 10 organizational pages. I will have the link to that in the description below. The video we talk about today, we won't be using any of these um, freebies in this resource, but I did want to still provide that link for you because um, some of the stuff that you may have on your to-do list and your organizational pages may kind of relate to some of the content we talk about today. So I'm going to get started. I will be sharing um, slides from a PowerPoint for you guys and talking while you see the slides. If there's any questions, leave a comment in the um, comment section below and make sure you click the subscribe button so that you can grab or so that you can get a notification for video three, which I will post tomorrow. So let's get started. We are going to dive in by talking about what kind of behaviors to expect. And you might see some changing behaviors over the next couple of weeks. You may have already seen them in your classroom. Uh, students and teachers are gonna be getting a little bit restless towards the end of the year. You may find that your students are starting to get a little bit more chatty. You may notice an uptick in behavior issues that you'll need to address. This may be because of the changes in the schedule that happen at the end of the year could be state testing, broken routines, maybe overall excitement or overall dread for that summer break, which I will talk about um, tomorrow. Either way, you're gonna see some shifts in behaviors over the next couple weeks, and I'm going to come up with a couple of ideas on how to tackle those behaviors. So let's discuss a few strategies that might help. The first strategy is going to be to attempt to maintain some normalcy in your classroom by keeping those rules and procedures all the way through the end of the year. I know that you'll have different things going on throughout the day, but having those firm classroom behaviors, or sorry, those firm classroom expectations, we should be able to stay the same so that students really have that consistency. That's going to help students feel a sense of familiarity and they're going to know what expectations to have as soon as they walk into your classroom. Now, if you find that your students are struggling with these rules and procedures or you feel like the entire class maybe needs a bit of a refresh, go ahead and get your beginning of the year rules and procedures activities back out and revisit those. Have a morning meeting each day with a mini lesson on a rule or a procedure or some sort of expectation that you're seeing your students may be slipping with. Include activities from that pack. Um, that's gonna help your students remember what their expectations are. The picture that you see in the background that is a activity or an activity set um, if you need that resource, I will put a link in the description. It's like a back to school rules and procedures pack, but just in case you need a revisit on rules and procedures, that's a good pack to start with. Um, so the link is in the description below. Take time in your day to acknowledge your students' efforts. So if you are reteaching or revisiting these rules and procedures and you're noticing the students are achieving these expectations, go ahead and reward those efforts. Maybe a morning meeting or before afternoon dismissal gives out some bonus dojo points or list out some, call out some of the students that you're you can tell are giving extra effort or maybe to turn it into a classroom goal, which I actually will discuss in a couple of slides. Um, I will talk about like class, um, countdowns and whatnot that will be like the kids working together as a class to achieve um, a reward system so make sure you are acknowledging and rewarding the students 
because it is difficult at the end of the year for them. So if they are doing their best with those rules and expectations, make sure you are giving them some sort of praise or positive reinforcement. Another strategy to fight off the end of the year behavior is to give some extra physical time. If possible, maybe give them some extra time outside of recess. Now I know that this not, might not be possible because some schools function on a tight playground schedule, um, but if you can, give them a little bit of extra playtime outside. If you don't have that opportunity, maybe give them some more go noodles or just dance videos on YouTube if you have access to either of those websites. Any sort of brain break will really help these students um, who may be feeling a little bit of restless um, behaviors. It might release some of that extra energy that's been building up in them. Now, speaking of more time outside, if you have an outdoor space around your school, try to use it for an outdoor lesson. Uh, maybe have your students bring a book outside and you can do like your quiet reading time outdoors in the grass or have your students bring a clipboard and a worksheet that you're currently working on. You guys can go outside, have a mini lesson. Students can work, you know, spread out in the grass and complete their worksheet or maybe a behavior or not behavior. I just saw the word behavior. Maybe have a partner activity where they work together outside um, on some sort of activity. We are going to really lean into that feeling of summer excitement. We're going to bring in some summer themes into your activities. So you will want to keep your ELA and your math blocks filled with standards based content and meaningful lessons throughout the end of the year. Um, you don't have to have like full blown lessons like you always have, but you don't want to spend the last three weeks of school doing zero learning and zero content because that will actually create an uptick in behavior issues you may see. So if you want to still um, keep that routine and that consistency for the students, you can keep your ELA and your math blocks, but you can fill them with summer themed fun. So for example, this, uh, this is a reading activity you could do. It is a text features passage all about underwater sea life. So while the students are still really enjoying learning about summer and getting into the themes of summer, they're also focusing on some common core skills and their reading comprehension skills at the same time. Um, I will put a link in my description. This is a summer text features pack. If you are interested in grabbing that, the link will be in the description below. Now, towards the final weeks of school, you may want to get a little bit more adventurous and try some more arts and crafts opportunities. Um, this can maybe be a reward for good behavior, or it can just be a project that you want to do. You don't have to go all out on your projects. I will say my very first year of teaching, I went all out in the last two weeks of school and we made like paper mache balloons with a... Uh, newspaper and glue and balloons and tissue paper. And it was a big process to do with kindergarten students. Um, so I'm not suggesting doing, you know, these intricate, crazy art and craft activities, but maybe just some things sprinkled into your day, maybe some directed drawings from YouTube, or just giving the students some free time to explore, you know, the markers that they might not be able to use every day. Um, you want to keep that consistency in your classroom with your lessons and whatnot, but giving them some positive experiences and um, maybe some fun arts and craftsy uh, experiments would be a fun time for them and beneficial for your class as a whole. So we're going to talk about countdowns now. Um, countdowns, there's two options I'm going to talk about. The balloon pop countdown, um, I've, I have a blog about it and a little freebie. If you want the freebie, I will put a link on this slide here to download it, but I will also have a clickable link in the description below. But with the fun countdowns, um, like I was saying a couple slides ago, it's very important to acknowledge and reward positive behaviors um, because the students are 
they're going to be really struggling uh, with all these behaviors that we've been talking about and you want to give them some positive reinforcement. So what I like to do in the, or what I like to suggest for the balloon pop is put a free or an expensive reward in each of the balloons. And then if the students can, as a class, earn that balloon at the end of the day, you pop it or maybe very quietly let the air out. Um, and then you'll read the reward and they get to participate in the reward the next day. So they'll have time if they need to go home and get crazy socks or crazy hair, they'll know what they need to do for the next day by the end of the day um, on whichever day they've earned it. I'm going to add a link in the description. Like I said, uh, the students love the free stuff just as much as they love the treats. Um, stuff like no sock day or pajama day or extra computer lab time, stuff that's not going to break your bank, but it will still give them lasting memories um, and things that they will that they will really want to work towards. Now here is a look at some of the positive and inexpensive inex rewards for that your students can earn. Now, as you see, most of them are very little effort, very little money. Uh, they're certainly great experiences for your students. So what I would suggest doing is cutting each of these cards apart. Uh, and I always did the last 10 days, but you can do more than that if you want. Um, but you'll take them cut up and you'll roll them up really skinny, like a, like a, uh, like a pirate map almost, and you'll sleeve them into those balloons and then you'll blow the balloon up, tie it, and you'll staple the little knot to a cork board or a bulletin board that you have in your classroom. Um, and then at the, end, at the end of the day, like I was talking about, you'll pop the balloon and they will get to experience the reward that following day. Uh, you can of course do it in a different manner if you want. You can pop it at the beginning of the day, um, but that would just require no planning for like crazy hair or like crazy sock day. Um, now, I did want to discuss an alternative to the countdown. Some teachers may not be able to do the balloon pop because of, you know, fear of loud noises or maybe um, it's not allowed in your school. So if for some reason you cannot do the balloon pop idea, this is an alternative you can do just writing the reward on the inside of a paper chain and students can either rip or cut a chain off each day if they've earned it. They'll read the reward that's on the inside of the chain, and then they'll be able to earn that reward either the next day or that day, depending on which structure you choose. So it's the same system, but just a quieter experience all around. And that concludes our second video, which is all about behavior at the end of the year. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about getting all of our stuff done in a really short three to four week span. Um, we're going to talk about stuff like getting their memory books finished up and how to close up the classroom. And we're going to be talking about how to do all of these things with our students in mind. So make sure you click that subscribe button uh, because you'll get a notification when I upload tomorrow's video. Um, and I will talk to you guys then. Thank you.